In 1985, we were smack dab in the middle of one of the coolest decades. We Are the World became a mega hit song that raised millions of dollars to help feed those suffering from hunger in Africa. Back to the Future was the highest grossing movie of the year, and New Coke? Well, that was a flop, so we really can't count that one. There's no doubt that the 1980s was full of awesome things, but over time, many of us have forgotten about the prices of those items. But don't worry. In today's video, we are going back to 1985, and we will compare those prices to today's prices and figure out which one is cheaper. So buckle up, and let's get in that time machine. When Cabbage Patch Kids came out in 1983, they quickly caught on. In fact, they were so popular that parents got into brawls right in the middle of stores just so they could secure one for their child. In 1985, the Cabbage Patch dolls remained popular and they were being sold for $33.95. If you adjust for inflation, that would be $97.91. That's far more than what they sell for today, which is only $59. They may not be as popular, but they are definitely cheaper. In the 1980s, the mail system was something that we all used. We wrote letters and paid for our bills, and it was all sent by mail. In order to do that, we needed stamps, and the price of a U.S. stamp in 1985 was 20 cents, but it quickly raised to 22 cents in February of that year. When you adjust these prices to today, it comes to $0.58 cents and $0.63. Cents. That's a tiny bit cheaper than the cost of a stamp today, which is $0.68. Cents. But how many people actually use those? Now it's much easier to call or text those that we want to, and many people use auto pay on their bills. For some reason, bananas are the most appealing fruit out there. In 1985, bananas were about 25 cents per pound on average, which is about 72 cents per pound when you adjust for inflation. That makes the actual price that we see today of 58 cents per pound not so bad. Cassette tapes were definitely the preferred way to have your music in 1985, but LPs were still available. On average, records were still being sold for around $6, which really wasn't too bad. That's about $17.30 in today's money. If you look up a new record on Amazon, it is quite a bit more. Def Leppard's Hysteria album is currently listed for $30.97. That price today certainly adds to the hysteria of that album. The movie theater was a popular place to go on Friday and Saturday nights. There were a lot of memorable movies that were released in 1985, such as Beverly Hills Cop, Cocoon, The Goonies, The Breakfast Club, Rocky IV, and Rambo First Blood Part II. The average price for a movie ticket was $3.75, which is about $10.82 in today's money when adjusted for inflation. The average price of a movie ticket today is $11.23, so it's really not that much of a difference. However, the experience is, we did not have reclining leather seats, beer, pizza, or the sound system that you see today. As we mentioned earlier, cassette tapes had really taken over the music market in the 1980s. They were smaller and more durable than records, so cassette tape decks were being installed in cars, which encouraged us to take music everywhere. But there was one thing that became insanely huge in the 1980s, and that was the Walkman. Sony released this in 1979, and soon kids and joggers all wanted one. However, they were not cheap, and it really depended on what sort of features it had. In 1985, they started off around $30 and went up over $100. That's about $86 to $370 in today's money. Walkmans may not be as popular as they were in the 80s, but they are still being manufactured. Sony has a digital Walkman that sells for $298 on Amazon. We certainly loved our music in the 80s, and owning an album just wasn't enough. Many people went to concerts, and the average price of admission was $15. If you adjust that for inflation, it comes to around $43.26. 
That really seems cheap, but people aren't buying albums like they used to, so musical artists have to make their money in other ways. They get a cut from music streaming services like YouTube, but the concerts are where the money really is. For example, look at Taylor Swift. The cheapest you can get a ticket to one of her concerts is $290, but some of her tickets range up into the thousands. By the time the mid-80s came around, the microwave had proven itself as an essential kitchen item. A one cubic foot microwave sold somewhere around $177, which is about $510 in today's money. You can easily buy the same size microwave for $75 today. Not only that, but today's microwaves can do so much more. Color televisions in the 1980s were the norm, and every household had at least one. A 20-inch color television in 1985 came with a hefty price tag of $500, which would set you back $1,442 in today's money. These televisions were big, bulky, and heavy, but they would last a lifetime. Odds are that you still probably had one from the 80s when everyone made the move to flat screens. The crazy thing is, you can now buy a 24-inch color TV for around $89, and it's way, way lighter. You won't get a hernia from lifting it. In 1985, people did not understand the need for a computer unless they had a business where they needed it. If so, they may have chosen the IBM PC XT, which had two disk drives and a monster 10 megabyte hard drive. It sold for $4,395, which sounds outrageous enough, but when you adjust for inflation, it gets even worse. That's $12,687. I'm not sure how anyone ever afforded those, but they did. Now you can get a Lenovo ThinkPad E16 with a touchscreen, wireless connection, and 512 gigabyte hard drive for only $1,039. That's quite a bit of difference in price, and not only that, but you can carry this one around anywhere you want. Today, almost all of us have a cell phone, and if you have the latest and greatest iPhone, then you probably paid $1,499 for it. That sounds expensive, but definitely not when you compare it to 1985 prices. A Motorola Dynatac would cost you $9,000, which is like $25,956 today. All this phone did was make and receive calls, and minutes were not cheap. It did not have the internet, email, or fax capabilities, so you're going to need to buy a fax machine, and that could set you back another $1,100. And what about an answering machine? This list could go on and on when you compare old cell phones to new cell phones today and what they can do. The Honda Accord became an insanely popular import car by 1985. Back then, you could get a base model for only $8,260, which is the equivalent of $23,822.42. That's quite a bit cheaper than the base model today, which is $28,990. The fully loaded model in 1985 was $11,681, which is about $33,688.82 in today's money. The fully loaded model in 2024 is listed for $39,985. Of course, there are way more options on today's models than what there were in 1985. Even if you drove a Honda Accord in the 80s, you were still probably concerned about gas prices. After all, that's probably why you even switched to Honda. But gas prices in 1985 had a national average of $1.12 per gallon, which is like $3.23 per gallon when adjusted for inflation. The national average for gas today is $3.52 per gallon. That's not a huge difference, but it is a little bit. Most people today have cars that get better gas mileage. A new home in 1985 had a median price of $84,300, which is somewhere around $243,000 when adjusted for inflation. That may sound bad, but the equivalent medium home today has an average price of $387,000.
it's no wonder why we are seeing more and more different types of housing options available. Homes are expensive. There have been numerous changes since 1985 and we often don't realize it until we take a look back on how things used to be. Some of the things that we may have thought were cheaper were in fact not, while other things actually were. That being said, which decade do you prefer? The 1980s or now? Let us know in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching.